Greetings! I'm Joseph Rebello for the uh, World Martial Arts Federation and welcome to DVD 2, Hansuki, Form and Application. Now, hopefully you've already picked up our first DVD entitled Hansuki, History and Technique. In this particular subsequent DVD, we're going to be focusing on the entire form is in its entirety and then select applications and elaborations that we really didn't get a chance to get into into DVD 1. Uh, we'll also have different people depicting different versions of the form Hansuki, so that way you, as a particular stylist who may embrace that particular form, will be able to look at those particular individuals and say, oh, that's the way we do it in our style, well, that's the way we do it in our particular system. Uh, this way it gives you a more well-rounded understanding about not so much what's right and what's wrong, but the difference and the diversity of the given form Hansuki. Now, briefly to recap, again, hopefully you've already gotten the first DVD and, and found out more about the history of Hansuki, but just a thumbnail uh, refresher, uh, Hansuki was brought to New England by Professor Nick Serio. Originally, it was a form that was taught by Professor William Kwai Sun Chow, and subsequently his protege, or William Chun Sr., taught this form to Professor Serio while he was doing one of his visits in the late 1960s to Hawaii to train with Professor Chow. Now that particular form I've had the pleasure of seeing uh, demonstrated by William Chun Jr., of course uh, Professor Chun's son, and when I saw that particular form in cross-reference to what's going to be depicted today, I realized that the form that we do throughout the uh, New England area and the orientations of Shaolin Kempo, again, through the lineage of Professor Serio, down through Fred Valari, going on through the present United Studios self-defense chain with uh, uh, Mr. Steve Damasco and Charlie Matera, uh, master self-defense chain being run by Mr. Uh, uh, James Bryant and Mr. Uh, Mr. Bob Nolte, or any of the variations off that. There's so many people I know throughout the Shaolin Kempo circles over the years. If your particular style does Hansuki, it comes from this lineage. Now, for those of you who may train with Mr. George Passari or look at him as part of the lineage, um, this particular form bypasses George Passari altogether. George Passari never learned this form. Uh, this was a form that was taught to, again, Nick Serio by William Chun Sr. and Professor Chow. And then, later on, uh, Frank Serio would in turn teach this particular form to Fred Valari. And that's why the Valari chain on down have this particular given form. Uh, that being said, let's now go into Hansuki. I preface this with one simple statement. Hansuki is the most commonly incorrectly, form, incorrectly performed form in the Shaolin Kempo slash New England Kempo system orientation. Over the years, just a lot of stuff was dropped out, taken out, and to this day, I still see individuals taking out and changing the form. Why? They don't understand it. Either A, it's not taught anywhere else in their system, B, they don't understand the application, or C, they presume that it's wrong and therefore fix it. Uh, again, you don't fix what's not broken, simply stated. But a lot of times uh, people aren't aware about what exactly they're doing in the course of a given form. Hopefully these two DVDs will give you greater insight into Hansuki and hopefully lead you along the proper path rather of understanding how to move from action to action, movement to movement, and section to section of this form. Now, uh, Justin, would be kind enough to step over here, please. Uh, we're going to go just into the very the beginning opening. So, our right foot meets our left, and again, let's talk right off the bat from this. Why do we do this? When a right foot draws in, a right foot steps out, automatically Japanese influence. You sit there and say, but it's a Chinese form. Shouldn't, shouldn't we do a Chinese influence? Again, predominantly, if you see a person drawing in their right and stepping out with their right, for the most part, that comes from a Japanese orientation. Most of the Chinese-oriented forms will step out with their left foot. And I understand we're looking at a mirror image in this venue, but please understand this is my left foot, and then drawing in my left foot. We say casting off the weak, and the weak come to the strong. But in this particular form, because of our orientation, we're going to step out with our right foot. We utilize a bow of respect, and then we step out with what's known as the pinyon opening. This is an influence from Okinawa and Goju. We step out to a good deep horse stance, hands come up in a vertical position. We exhale, interlocking our knuckles, dropping down to our hands, form simultaneous rolling hammer fist to the groin to three and nine o'clock respectively. 
A lot of people go, oh, it's a downward block. No, a downward block will move across your groin and block in that fashion. Or, as the Hawaiians would do, this is an upward block, this is a downward block, hammering directly into the offending limb. In this particular opening, we're doing neither of those. In the application, if I have an opponent grabbing me from here, from my right shoulder facing me, and they're squinting to me, because their intention is to punch me in the face. Okay, I'm rolling from here, pow, hammer fist into the groin. This can also work in relationship to a, a person's grabbing me by the shoulder, and then I'm saying, hey, look, I don't have any trouble, the guy grabs my wrist. Again, I can roll from here and drive it right back into them. So these are a couple of the applications. It can also be used against the punch coming from this angle, checking from here, rolling, hammer fisting into the groin, or again, rolling from here, picking up with this hand, as we'll do later on in the form, and executing a rolling hammer fist into the groin. Or, as we might know in Shaolin Kempo, a cross hammer fist. But instead of in front of us, as we may have practiced in our basics, we do this unilaterally to each side. Thank you, sir. So again, our right foot meets our left, drawing in. We utilize a bar of respect. We step out the horse. And again, I'm going to slide over so Justin has enough room as well. And what we're going to do, we're going to bend our knees. We're going to interlock our knuckles, exhaling as we breathe, till our arms round like so. Visualizing again those simultaneous hammer fists. Now at this point, our right foot draws in to meet our left. And now we're going to go into the next section. Now from here, what we're going to do, and I'm going to back up a little bit, we're going to do part of the kosher root breathing exercise. Now, this is not in the original context of the form as I've seen demonstrated by Mr. Chun. And again, I recommend once again, contact him directly to see the particular Chun family version of the form. Apparently, we have several choices on where this came from. A, this could have come from Professor Siri training with Professor Chow and learning this breathing exercise. Again, Professor Chow was very adamant about doing many different types of breathing exercises. For those of you who are, familiar, who are on the internet, you may actually see some footage of Professor Chow performing a short form, and it's what uh, Mr. Chun refers to as a tension form. Again, dynamic tension through breathing, isometric and isokinetic action. Breathing exercises to tense the body, make it like a fortress. But this particular orientation of this particular breathing exercise comes to us from James Matosin, from his second text, What is True Self-Defense? It is part of what he refers to as the kosher ru yoga breathing exercises. That being said, that book is extremely rare to find. Good luck. I'm very fortunate I myself have a copy. A lot of people, oh, you mean what is self-defense? No. I mean what is true self-defense, his sequel to the What is Self-Defense book. And if those of you who know, if you see What is Self-Defense and you look at the history, that book is actually a plagiarism on an earlier book on karate written by Mutsu, who was a student of Motobu Sensei and also worked from that lineage. When we look at the second book, what is true self-defense, it's pencil drawings. It's pencil drawings and just typewriter typewrite text. You can see a drastic difference in the quality of the text. But this exercise is in there.